Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Her driving record includes more than 30 suspensions of her license, but police say that didn't stop this woman from driving drunk. A Detroit family grieves a very loved young man tonight. He died standing on a sidewalk talking with neighbors. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. It is heartbreaking new context for a story that we had breaking here last night at 11. 15 year old Donnell Johnson had stopped his mini bike, stopped to speak with neighbors, and at that very moment, another man driving a sedan down the street lost control at high speed and slammed into Donnell. Our Rod Maloney spoke with Donnell's family this afternoon, and they are devastated. You can see the property damage here, the broken fencing in the porch. You can see the skid marks on the lawn to know that there was an accident here. But what you can't see from this scene is the pain and the anguish that was caused by somebody speeding down a side street. 15 year old Donnell Johnson was that kid in the neighborhood, always looking for a way to make an honest buck, mowing lawns, cleaning out houses. His proud grandmother, Regina Johnson, told Local 4 this afternoon. He was a very bright child. He loved to do things. He loved to work. He was always happy. He was a loving kid. He loved everybody. He knew everybody in the neighborhood. Everybody in the neighborhood knew him. This was the ugly scene last night. Donnell's mini bike pushed aside. He was killed by the impact of this white Chevy Impala driven by a 24 year old man. Police say it was screaming down the street. The driver lost control, jumping the curb, hitting Donnell. His father, Reginald Johnson, fought hard to stay strong, talking about his son. I don't get to see my baby boy no more. I got to put my baby boy in the ground. Hell, he's supposed to be putting me in the ground. And the neighbors tell Local 4, Helen Street is really more like a drag strip. Elizabeth Crawford couldn't believe her eyes last night when she emerged from her house and saw the scene. It, it definitely was senseless. A little child lost his life for something stupid. It's brought us closer. That's what it's done. Um, not that we were so distant, but we know that mm, every minute is not promised. And fewer, truer words uh, have ever been spoken, really. Now, uh, one of the things that happened last night is that the young man driving that car tried to get out and run away. Well, the neighbors saw him, grabbed him, held him until the police got there, and then they arrested him. And in the meantime, they say that there was a lot of cash, lots and lots of cash inside that car. So we'll have to see where that is all headed. Back to you. We would expect to learn a, a good bit more when the arraignment happens. Do we know when that's going to be for mm -hmm. the driver? Uh, it, probably in the next day or two, Devin, and that, that is the question. Uh, what will the charges be? Will there be anything about that money, perhaps right. drugs? Is there an issue with drag racing on that street? Because that's what one of the reports said, that there may have been a couple of right. other cars involved as well. Yeah. So we're going to have to wait and see. we Will do. All right, Rod. Well, let's get you caught up on your forecast right now. Andrew's in for Ben, and it's a lot cooler today than what we saw it yesterday. It's cooled <laughs> off quite a bit. We had one load of rain, and here's a little more, Andrew. Exactly right. Becoming soggy once again across much of southeast Michigan. Not the heavier rain that we saw earlier this morning and last night, but at least some light to moderate showers that are a bit more persistent than what we've seen in the past few hours. A little bit more widespread here in portions of Macomb County, especially around the Roseville and East Point area along 696 down through Royal Oak, over in parts of Oakland County as well, stretching into Waterford and places like Clarkston downriver and farther to our south as well. South zone right now getting drenched with heavier rain in this area of yellow right here that you see to the south and east of Adrian. All of this due to an area of low pressure that's been spinning over us for the past few hours and it will continue to do so before it slowly pulls away farther to the northeast, taking along with it the rain and introducing clearer skies later on tonight. But it's already cool out there right now. You heard Kimberly and Devin mention it, only 60 degrees. And we'll need our jackets later this evening and tonight. We'll talk about how chilly it gets tonight, talk about a rebound in temperatures for tomorrow, but any rain for our Father's Day weekend? More on that in just minutes. Now remember, you can track the showers yourself, just like us, the local forecasters, with the local forecasters app. It has interactive radar, severe weather alerts, and a whole lot more and updated features. And you can download it for free. That's the best part. So take out your phone right now search WDIV in your app store.
Andrew, now to the very big news that's developed today in the Flint water crisis. Today, prosecutors dropped all criminal charges in the case, but that doesn't mean that this is over. This actually means a new beginning. So let's bring in Jason Colthorpe right now. Jason, there's a new team leading the way here. Exactly right. Uh, and there's a new team of investigators that involves Solicitor General Fadwa Hamoud and Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy, who say charges were dropped because the Attorney General's office had grave concerns of how the first investigation was being handled. Worthy and Hamoud said when they started doing some digging, all of their concerns were validated, particularly regarding the pursuit of evidence. By dismissing all current charges, the new team gets a fresh start. And by the way, the old charges can be refiled in this. Now the first investigation already cost taxpayers tens of millions of dollars. Some critics are blasting today's decision, saying this is going to be a huge waste of money. But Attorney General Dana Nessel disagrees, telling our sister station in Flint this. What's the price of justice for a city of nearly 100,000 people? The thing is, we have to be fair. She goes on to say the money aspect. Yeah, it's upsetting and it bothers me. I was very critical and I've been very critical since the very start about this prosecutor for pay. I don't subscribe to that. I think you use career civil servants in order to prosecute. Meantime, Flint Mayor Karen Weaver is praising the decision to drop the charges and get a new team of investigators. She says for her, this means the state is prioritizing Flint and this time the full truth can come out because so many things were left out the first time around. But it sure does shake up an already long timeline on this. Guys, back to you to come. OK, thanks, Jason. A West Bloomfield couple is now facing up to four years in prison after 178 cats were found in their home. Jonathan and Jennifer Klein faced a judge earlier this week. Oakland County Animal Control officers discovered the cats living in terrible conditions back in April. Uh, on April 24th, at least 60 of the cats were euthanized because they were beyond saving. Right now, the couple is out on bond. They are due back in court next week. One Detroit woman who already had quite a driving record was stopped and arrested by Troy police last week. Troy police say that's because Latasha Bevel was drunk, did not have her license with her. After looking it up, they found out her license has been suspended more than 30 times. Bevel was stopped for driving out of control on Big Beaver near Rochester Road. She was charged with DUI, driving without insurance and driving with a suspended license. Once again, Local 4 viewers have come through to help someone in need, and this time it's someone who helps others. It was late last week we told you about George, a very loved Roseville handyman who had saved up for a new work bicycle to carry around his tools. Well, someone stole it the same day that he got it, but as Sean Lay shows us, George is rolling again. This is handyman George here in Roseville. Check it out. He is on a brand new $900 bike thanks to you. So many local for viewers so touched by George's story. Yeah! Here you go, a new machine. Here you go, George. George McCloskey is back on three wheels, and that feels amazing. Well, I'm very happy. Even though it's raining a little bit, I don't care. <laughs> it's nice, yes, it's, it's beautiful. George is a beloved Roseville handyman. A bike is his only way to get around. He saved for one year for a new trike to carry his tools in. We showed you last week that moments after finally getting that $900 beauty of a bike, he stopped at the gas station at Gratiot and Martin. A person rolled up and rolled off with George's bike. George's story touching lives all over Metro Detroit. Dozens of people offered to buy George a new bike. His friend Edward explains why George captured so many hearts. He, he's not a lazy person, and that was his work truck, you know, and people want to see that. You know, they, they, they to someone trying. Birmingham dentist Ali and Mohammed Saad saw George's story, and they bought this new bike for him. Oh, I love him. I, I, I appreciate him when, I, when he first told me about what was going on, and I just thank, thank, thank him very much. What's the best thing to come of all of this for George? Well, how people are, and how people care for other people. You know, good things come out of, you know, not, not everything's negative bad news. There's good things that happen in the world. People in Roseville.
really great. We knew people would come through. We and really they, and did. Get again. And it, nice to see him smiling and just having a good time, even though it's raining. He said it's, he just <laughs> wants to be out there. <laughs> All right, in more news tonight, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders will be leaving her position at the end of the month. President Trump praised Sanders on Twitter and gave Sanders his support for a possible run for governor of her home state of Arkansas. Sanders spoke saying she loved every minute of her job as a face of the Trump administration. Right now, President Trump hasn't named a replacement for Sanders. We'll have more on Sarah Sanders' departure coming up at 6.30 on NBC Nightly I News. I mentioned how busy the news day has been on the national scene. Let's see if Lester Holt and company are ready to go three hours long tonight on <laughs> yeah, that really. on Nightly News. Here's Lester from New York. Yeah, you just got the crew's attention in here, believe me. Uh, Kim and Devin, coming up, uh, an NBC News exclusive. We talked to Anita Hill. It's her first TV interview since Joe Biden announced his campaign, how she feels about Biden now, all these years after the Clarence Thomas hearings, and whether she would vote for him over President Trump. And another NBC News exclusive, my interview with a war veteran and rising political star who suddenly dropped out of a major race to seek treatment for PTSD. And I guess, Lester, this man was really, really suffering through that. Yeah, he was and wasn't quite sure what was going on. He was having suicidal thoughts, other yeah. forms of anxiety, couldn't sleep. He left the race, and now he is committed to a different kind of public service. You're going to hear more from him in my interview tonight. Okay, that's coming up in about 20 minutes. We'll see you then, Lester. Thank you. Still ahead here at 6, the local community putting in a new splash pad. Also, the end of an era in Waterford. Tim? There's a lot of memories inside Charlie's Barbershop today. Handshakes and hugs as Charlie hangs up the scissors. We'll introduce you to the 85-year-old who's been serving the community his entire life.